Yeah, See, that way he can he can claim incompetence yeah, versus crime. Yeah. Uh, That's exactly what it is. It, and I, he can throw. I didn't Holman know. I didn't know. Please forgive me. See, Rock Holm is going to realize real soon why he is where he is. Biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. Welcome to the Vote Map Podcast. I'm Matt, not I'm Mike. And today we're brought to you by the Swamp Fox Podcast Network and a new sponsor, the Cassett Country Store. Oh my. So if y'all need anything at all no, under the sky, Literally. <laughs> you can go to the Cassett Country Store. You can get animal feed, you can get nails, caulk for your bathroom. If you have a plumbing emergency in your trailer, you need to get some piping and stuff done. It's, they have it there. Or you can get some beer or wine or... I had to stop by and pick up a uh, plug kit last week. There you go. Because one of these freaking ass clowns working <laughs> on uh, up there at uh, North Central High School, uh, the Masons up there let some of their, uh, they're called spacers, they go between the brick and the block, mm-hmm. veneer. Uh, yeah. Well, you saw the bricks. Yeah. About laying, an hour. Laying down the aisle. <laughs> yeah. About an hour after that in my personal vehicle. Ah, uh, nice. Yep. Pulled one. But, yep, stopped right in there at Casa Country Store and... It was good to go in about five minutes. It is home to the best pizza in Cassett. For sure. <laughs> you're a pizza <laughs> eater. Right? I'm a pizza eating fool. I'm telling you. It's the best pizza you're going to find in Cassett. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's 100% guaranteed. <laughs> um, and w- today we are in the undisclosed location, deep in the heart of Kershaw County, with our special guest, Jeff Maddox, with two T's. Indeed. And today is going to be a, a more serious podcast. Uh, we're also simultaneously rec- video recording this for Jeff's YouTube channel. Uh, we want to spread this story wide. A lot of people have no idea who Lori Jean Ellis was. They don't know what happened on April 21st, 2008 at 10 o'clock at night. So we're going to dig in deep. This, this has been weighing on me for a year. I've had this report and trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do with it. And the only thing I've come up with are notebook full of questions. That's it. Mm-hmm. Just questions and questions and questions. And when I ask people about it, they have no idea. Well, I, dang, I didn't know about that. Yeah. Um, and now we're getting to the point where we're about to start asking the people who were involved. Yeah. Um, We've been a long, uh, long drawn out <coughs> process. Very that's for long. sure. Yeah. Uh, the, the case was opened and closed within four months. Uh, and the solicitor did not move forward with charges and he said the officers were justified in the shooting. Um, 2015 a civil lawsuit was filed by her family members and I believe the county paid out a little over two million dollars. Correct. Wrongful death suit. Um, so I what, thought it was justified though. Right it's justified but it's a wrongful death. Okay. It's kind of like the OJ Simpson you know he cut yeah. people's heads off and got <laughs> off and then but you got to pay their family millions of dollars for cutting their heads off. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we went on a little field trip today. Yeah, we went on a field trip today. We went out to 1216 Dogwood Lane, where Lori Jean Ellis lived and where she was killed. When the, the whole operation kind of just raised more questions than answered, honestly. Yeah, yeah when we got there, um, you know, it's a neighborhood. It's yep. not out in the country. It's not a trailer out in the middle of the woods. It's, nope. it's a neighborhood. There's a house within spitting distance on either side. Mm-hmm. Yep. Within earshot. Definitely within earshot. So uh, I want to start this out by reading South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, uh, they go by SLED, S-L-E-D, um, their investigative report that was written on April 30th, 2008. Uh, the special agent in charge, the lead investigator, was Special Agent James Flowers, and he was assisted by Special Agent Gianna Williams, and this is in regards to an officer-involved shooting. The victim named is Lori Ellis, Suspect number one, Tyrell Coleman. Suspect number two, Greg Lowry. Now, there was a third deputy 
that was in this incident, um, his name is Billy Soul, but he wasn't named in this investigative report. He's That's in the it. incident reports, though, correct? Well, we're going to get to that because okay. it's very important to notice that he was not named as one of the suspects. Mm -hmm. All righty. This says, Introduction. On April 21st, 2008, Kershaw County Sheriff Steve McCaskill requested that the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division investigate a shooting involving two deputies from the Kershaw County Sheriff's Office and one officer from the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. According to Sheriff McCaskill, Kershaw County Sheriff's Office deputies Tyrell Coleman and William Soule, along with DNR agent Greg Lowry, were attempting to serve warrants on Lori Jean Ellis at her home, 1216 Dogwood Lane in Cassett, South Carolina. When the shooting occurred, officers called for assistance and the Kershaw County Sheriff's Office requested SLED Lieutenant Tim Simmons respond with a robot to enter the home to determine if a threat continued to exist. The SLED robot entered the residence and agents were able to determine that Ellis had been fatally wounded. SLED Captain Paul Grant assigned Special Agent James Flowers, Special Agent Gianna Williams, and Special Agent Kevin Baker to investigate. All right, so let's... This is the, like the first page, mm -hmm. okay? Victim, Lori Jean Ellis, suspect Tyrell Coleman, suspect Greg Lowry. The sheriff at the time, McCaskill, asked them to investigate Tyrell Coleman and William Soule, according to their introduction. Right? If you go to the form where the sheriff requests an investigation, he doesn't name Billy Soule. That's why he's not up on the header of this as a suspect. Mm -hmm. But SLED took it upon themselves to investigate William Soul. Okay. Why would they do that? Hmm. Well, he was standing in the back of the pick truck, pickup truck holding a shotgun, supposedly looking for a dog, right? And we'll, we'll, we're going to dive into their written statements, um, probably not in this episode, but in the coming episodes. Um, so he was there on the scene. He's one of the initial officers. He went with Lowry to serve these bench warrants. And um, Coleman arrived on scene later. So the summary, on April 22, 2008, SLED Special <coughs> Agent Kevin Baker obtained a search warrant for the residence, 1216 Dogwood Lane, Cassett, South Carolina. On 4-22-2008, SLED Crime Scene Special Agent Carl Kinley and Renee Strickland responded to the scene to gather evidence. They recovered the weapon that Ellis pointed at the officers, and it was determined to be a pellet rifle. This pellet rifle was turned over to the SLED firearms for analysis. On 4-22-2008, SLED Special Agent Gianna Williams and Special Agent Flowers collected the firearms from Coleman, Lowry, and Soul, and obtained gunshot residue for analysis. On 4-22-2008, Special Agent Flowers and Special Agent Williams interviewed Lowry. He completed a written statement that provided the following information. And this is a very um, paraphrased. So this is like his quick paraphrasing of what Lowry told him. Real quick there. What were the dates between the incident and this? So the incident happened at 10, about 10.15 on the 21st. 21st, okay. So. And so they investigated from the 21st through into the morning. Gotcha. So until about 3 a.m., gotcha. I think. Okay. Um, <coughs> so Lowry, he completed a written statement and that provided the following information. He and Sol went to serve warrants on Ellis. And these were failure to appear bench warrants. Mm -hmm. He noticed Ellis at the residence and used his loudspeaker to inform her that he had warrants for her arrest. He saw Ellis come to the back door of the residence and point a long gun in his direction. He heard a pop and saw smoke come from the end of the weapon. He fired two shots and heard Coleman fire his weapon. That's the end of that statement. Mm -hmm. right? um, Lowry wrote two pages. Okay. Uh, uh, but that's a very short paraphrased version of what he wrote. Um, then Special Agent Flowers and Special Agent Williams interviewed Tyrell Coleman. He completed his written statement. He responded to the residents to assist Lowry and Soul. He witnessed Lowry call Ellis on the loudspeaker from his truck. He and Lowry attempted to gain entry to the home. He noticed Ellis standing at the back door with a gun. He saw Ellis raise the gun and point it toward Lowry and him. 
he saw a flash from her gun. He saw Lowry fire shots at Ellis. He fired once at Ellis and once at a light that was illuminating them. End of statement. That's a very paraphrased version. How's our audio? Something's up with uh, Jeff's mic. Oh. I'm just going to cut it off temporarily? Yep. Um, then we go on to William Soule being interviewed by Flowers and Williams. In his written statement, he and Lowry went to Ellis's home to serve warrants on her. Upon arrival, they noticed a woman stick her head out and called her pit bull. He heard Lowry call out that they were law enforcement and that they had warrants. He noticed the woman slam the door. Soul waited for Coleman to arrive, and they proceeded to the rear of the residence in Lowry's DNR truck. He saw Coleman and Lowry attempt to gain entry into the residence. He witnessed Ellis standing at the door with a long gun pointed at the officers. Then he heard shots. That is not what Billy Soul's statement says. Uh, and we're going to go into that later. So then Captain Grant interviewed Ellis' neighbor, Stacy Payne. When we say neighbor, we mean next door neighbor. Right? Um, these two houses are probably, what would you say, 50 feet apart? I think about 50 feet. Payne completed a written statement where she said she heard gunshots and came outside of her residence. She asked the officers if everything was all right and was told to go back inside because the lady was shooting at them. End of that statement. Um, and her written statement is a lot more detailed than that. Then it goes into the documents that were obtained. Um, then we have attachments, like an uh, index. All right, so this goes in, then it gets into her warrants. So she uh, had a 30-day, you know, she was convicted for failure to appear in court on four counts, I guess it would be. On April 2nd, she was issued a bench warrant for failure to appear uh, on a charge of writing a fraudulent check less than $1,000. Then on April 9th, she was um, had three charges, found guilty on three charges of failure to appear for uh, wildlife fines. Uh, so I'm guessing she was probably out in the woods or parked on a country road in her car drinking. So she had um, a broken seal in a vehicle. So it was a, a open bottle, I'm guessing a bottle of liquor that the seal was broken on. Yeah. Which I yeah. think they've since yeah. changed that law, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can have like a half half drink bottle of whiskey if the cap's on just as long as you're not I don't know that. I, I would assume that it would have to be in the trunk yeah. I don't uh, or out of reach of the driver maybe yeah. in the back seat um, and then this one was for op, uh, failure to surrender a suspended driver's license and then driving under suspension um, and so she didn't show up to court and of course in your absence you're going to be found guilty um, and that is why the DNR agent was involved because he was the one who originally wrote those tickets. Right. So he uh -huh. was probably at the court that day. Uh, Laura Jean didn't show up for court. Judge issues the bench warrant. He probably says, I'll take those and I'll go get her. Yeah. Um, which is normal from what I hear. That's kind of normal practice. That, that would sound reasonable, yeah. wouldn't it? Instead of going through the, you know, send it through the courts to the sheriff's office, have the sheriff's office process, and then, you know. Yeah, so and then he, delegate somebody to go. Right. And yeah, he knows that. her. He's, he's interacted with her before. He knows where she lives. She knows what she looks like. So it totally makes sense that he would be serving these warrants. Yeah. Plus, DNR agents don't get to serve a lot of warrants in the first place, so he was probably like, oh, cool, I get to actually do yeah, some right. police work <laughs> instead of chasing down poacher, which is real police work. But um, Let's see. Then we go. We have the search warrant. So I guess they had to get a search warrant to go in there to collect evidence after the bench warrants and then the shooting, so then they had to get a search warrant for the property. Well, it's a separate incident at this point. I mean, yeah, right. you need, yeah, well, is, what you're saying is, and I... Uh, let me get the nomenclature right. Um, they go to serve the bench warrant, mm -hmm. and there's a gunshot. Right. Right? And then they call to get a bench warrant, I mean a, a search warrant. Yeah. And that's when Rock shows up. No. So this was when they, a bench warrant does not give you, if you, they were serving it in what's called good faith. So Greg Lowry knew there was a, a warrant for her arrest. He didn't have the actual physical document of the warrant. So when they decided we're going to have to go in and get her to enter the residence, you have to have the physical document 
with you. So they called Coleman to bring the warrants. So they had, because you you have to show a warrant when you go in somebody's house, you have right. to show it to them. Right. So, this so is they, the were, this they is were outside the property waiting on rock. Right. Yes. Um, and from what we saw today, the entire property is enclosed by a fence, right. not right. just the backyard. So to get to the back door, you have to go through a fence and drive to the back of the house. Correct. Now what we also noticed is that one of the gates, this is a two gate fence yeah. system at the driveway, one of the gates is missing. Right. Which has led us to believe that Maybe they drove through it. They cowboyed right on through that page style, which mm -hmm. is what we heard in the, what we read in the Washington Post article. Mm-hmm. That Billy and Rock were standing in the back of the truck and, and Greg Lowry drove through the fence, drove through the gate. Sounds like an OSHA violation to me. Yeah, that's a little <laughs> unsafe. <laughs> um, what seems interesting to me that, that they were apparently at the property before they called Rock. Yes. Yeah. To go I, I would get bet a that warrant. they were out at the head so, of the, the park out there. That'd be my guess. I can't imagine. That. That's a very neighborhoody area. Well, when you, when, right when you read their statements, they saw Lori Jean Ellis poke her head out the back door. And then when they said, hey, Lori, we got warrants for you, she closed the door before they even went through the, the fence. The only way that would have been possible is if they had already been through the if fence. If they were already through the fence standing at the back, yeah. right? Because and, and Lowry said he knew from dealing with her before that he would not be able to make contact with her through the front door. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the area, which I would assume is most people and was mm -hmm. us until two hours ago, yeah. the behind the house outside of the fence is a heavily wooded area. Right. The side, both sides of the house are other residences. Mm-hmm. The house fairly close to yeah, the like property said, line. 50 feet yeah. max. Yeah. Um, no, you could not have seen the back of that. We couldn't see the back of that no. house from the from the street. Or no way. There's the no fence. way. Mm -hmm. Unless maybe you went to the neighbor's backyard. Yeah. And looked across the fence, which maybe they maybe that's when we are. maybe they went to the neighbors and they were standing at the fence yelling out for Lori Jean. Yeah, I'm just um, seeing more lies here. When when you when you're serving a warrant in in this fashion, mm -hmm. which was we're looking at a no not raid no, here effectively. Yeah. You wouldn't have been sitting outside in front of the house no. for an hour. Well, and you wouldn't do it with a DNR agent in one day. No, no. So that's what I'm saying. These guys were outside of Shepherd Acres. You think? Yeah. Yeah, probably right down the road at that little Met church. Up with, like, yep. hey, Coleman, come bring the warrants. We're going to go get in this house and get this. Then they, then they initiated yeah, the raid. Yeah, that's possible. And that once they had that in hand, they ran the gate, mm -hmm. shot the dog, maced the dog. Well, whatever, well, you know, you, wonder, you wonder why they didn't. Uh, prepare enough and get the warrant. I mean, they're coming from Camden Way. I mean, well, yeah, I, I don't know. Was Billy Soul? Is it? Did he just run into Lowry, say at the Cassett store, and they, you know, had some coffee and shoot the shit? What the hell? Let's hey, go. man, I got some warrants, but it's going to be wanting you know, like it's boring. Let's what are we going to do yeah. tonight? Hey, let's go serve these warrants. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you know, maybe that's what happened. Um, the search warrant. So then the shooting happens. Sled comes. Highway Patrol comes. All these backup deputies come. They all, you know. Shot fired. It's shot a big fired. deal. So everybody, yeah. everybody comes, right? Yeah. Uh, EMS was called out there, uh, and they were staged down the road. Um, it's a big deal. Uh, then they have to get a search warrant to actually go into the house to search for evidence. I guess to come onto the property to search for evidence. Mm -hmm. So on April, this uh, the reason for belief that the property sought is on the subject premises. This was written by. Baker, something. Um, on April 21st, 2008, deputies of the Kershaw County Sheriff's Department, along with an officer of the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, attempt to serve a warrant at the location to be searched. While attempting the warrant, a black female approached officers with a firearm and fired the weapon at the officers. The officers returned fire and struck the female. The I believe the items sought are at the location to be searched and a search is necessary to further the investigation. So, this was signed on April 22nd, 2008. So already he's saying, whoever uh, filed this search warrant said, we need to search this property because this woman came at these officers with a weapon and fired it at them. At this point, they don't know that that is a fact. No. But he is stating it as a fact for the search warrant. Another thing I found weird about this search warrant is it has a line on here, a written inventory of all property seized pursuant to the search warrant 
shall be made to, and then there's a blank line where somebody would put their name, right? So, but this blank, nobody is responsible for receiving the, the evidence. Yeah. Right. Either that or Sled whited, his, whited this out before they sent it to me. It could be. Uh, but it just looks blank. There's another spot on here that they tried to white out that they failed. Um, and we're, we'll talk about that. So here's the stuff that was found on the property. 3.15 a.m., April 22nd, 2008. One pellet gun, four shell casings, one projectile, one gunshot residue kit bearing the name Lori Jean Ellis. So I'm I'm guessing the projectile is the one that was in her head still, right? Because the bullet entered the back base of her skull at the back and lodged itself partially exposed out of one of her eyes. Um, but I would think that that uh, projectile would have been retrieved during the autopsy. One would think, yeah. It doesn't say where the projectile came from. It doesn't That's say the where the pellet gun was found. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it doesn't say where the shell casings were found, and there's no photographic evidence that SLED gave me no photographs of any of the crime scene, so we don't know. But you have already put in another FOIA? For yes. Well, I put it in for the... Uh, because apparently trial. all evidence wasn't... That's right. not part of all evidence. <laughs> so what we're going to do is stop here with Lori Jean Ellis. There's enough questions that people, when they hear this, they're already going to be thinking like, man, something doesn't feel right about this. Well, let's go into our field trip a little more, too. Okay. Because we did interview a lady. We came, yes. Um, when we got to 1216 Dogwood Lane, I knocked on the door. There's an obviously new people living at that address. Um, looks like an addition was put on the back of a single wide trailer. Yep. Um, nobody answered the door, so we're going to try again later. I was able to make contact with a neighbor across the street, and she says that she's only lived at her current address for four years. Before that, she lived at 1216 Dogwood Lane. Mm -hmm. And she said she had to move because the trailer caught fire and burned down. Yes. Um, so that would be four years ago, mm -hmm. about 2016. Yep. The, uh, when, when did the payout happen for the civil suit? Probably 2016. Hmm. Because the, the suit was filed in 15, <coughs> I imagine it would take. Yeah, it, it's somewhere right <coughs> around in there. So that's 16, another 17. another odd occurrence. Not n accusing anybody of doing anything because nope. we don't know. I mean, just trailers burn down all the time. Mm -hmm. um, well, it could have been family trying to get rid of. I mean, I'm not sure. saying that it was. But yeah, I mean, maybe or maybe the owner or the guy who owned the land said, "I got to get rid of this damn thing yeah. and put a new trailer on it." Maybe mm -hmm. you know. Um, or it was an accident. I mean, we're not pointing any fingers no. here. Yeah, but, but it was just uh, okay. Well, but it's burned down. Two thousand around two thousand sixteen. Um, and I mean, typically when you're trying to cover something up, you get rid of the evidence burning as soon as possible. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, like as soon as possible. This yeah. is eight years. What, what I th it think is clear is none of the stories match. Not no. a one. Not and, a one. No. <laughs> and in those depositions and everything, the depositions uh, the, later are really telling. Yeah, and um, and you can tell there's a cover up. There was a cover up. Lori Jean Ellis. We, we, and I, we didn't mention, this pellet rifle was inoperable. Inoperable. It did not work. It would not fire when they tried to test it at sled. It would not fire. I wonder if that's because it was shot to shit, maybe. You know how do I mean? you get it, a flash it, out that, of something that doesn't yeah, work? Yeah, right, right. So how do, how do, do you get a muzzle flash? How do you, how do you get, get a muzzle a, flash and smoke it out of yeah, a pellet rifle? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, Billy Soul later said that he heard, the gunshot that he heard was a loud crack like an SKS. Yeah. Specifically, that's, that's what he said. That's what he said. So that is categorically false. There is no way in the, hell. The, another thing this shows is there's no magic in the badge that yeah. keeps people honest. For real. That is and, absolutely and, and as a matter of fact, the badge allows what we see here mm -hmm. is lies and more lies to be covered up. Well, qualified immunity as well. Even if, it, if it, the truth does come out, they're still covered, be like, I was acting in good faith. I thought she had a, a weapon pointed well, at us. Well, let me ask you this. Who paid for it? We did. Who paid for it? The taxpayers. Mm -hmm. The insurance or whatever it was. Yeah. It was not any of the three gentlemen that actually caused her death. No. No. I'd be interested to see. I don't know if anybody knew Rock from back then. That mm -hmm. was before my time in yeah, the area. Somebody had to talk with him about well, her. Or? Just physically. I mean, he's 
clearly an out of shape dude nowadays. Yeah. I wonder if he's been from taking the, his heart from what the picture, lady. Like, well, from, from, from what, what I, the picture looks like of that time, um, he was he was already overweight. No, no. You know? yeah. He's always been a big kid. Like, yeah, football, yeah, football, football, yeah. yeah. And I'm not. Uh, I think I mean, he got a, a a pretty horrible knee injury or something in high school that. Which is understandable. That kind of uh, thing happens. But I mean, yeah. it's he. I wonder how much his murder by heard, shooting somebody in the back of the head. I've heard from somebody um, who I'm not going to name who was close to the situation, I guess, or I worked with Rock. He said that Rock took it very hard. That that it was he had a really hard time dealing with this. You can imagine. No, yeah. If you, yeah if you, I can imagine. If I feel if you shoot anybody yeah. in the line of duty. Um, it's hard, even if even if it's one hundred percent justified, clearly yeah. justified. Yeah. You're still going to have struggle with it. So that doesn't really tell us anything, you know. He just and then he uh, in addition to that, if you're a Barney Five and you mm -hmm. and you know you just do the everything wrong, mm -hmm. right. that even that's got to eat even worse. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but everybody say, hey, yo, you know, we'll take care of this. Now, I think we Rock understand. Coleman, I think he left the sheriff's office shortly after this and went and started working for Camden Police Department where he, you know, worked his way up mm -hmm. through the ranks and now he's the number two man, the chief deputy at the uh, sheriff's when, office. When, Major. Uh, when did he come back? He came with Lee Bone. Okay. Lee Bone was elected, Rock Coleman came uh, And so did well, Goldsmith. So did Goldsmith, mm -hmm. you know. It all uh, ties together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember what was that Harry Truman said? The buck stops here? Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> um, all right. So when, when we talk again, oh, another thing about that, the our field trip today, right? So mm -hmm. looking at the way that's laid out, the, Greg Lowry is very adamant that he used his loudspeaker a, around a dozen times. He's from very, outside the from fence. From outside the fence, right? Very adamant that he did that. He also says that he used his loudspeaker from outside the fence, and then he saw Lori Jean open the door and then poke back, pop back in the house. The back door. Which we know, <laughs> if you're sitting in a vehicle on the road, which the gate is right at the road, at the end of the mm -hmm. driveway, at the road, there's no physical way possible you can see somebody open the back door and, nope. and look out. Now, this being a new building, mm -hmm. maybe it was position a little bit differently. No, there's no trailer, there's no mobile home in that whole neighborhood that's facing no. sideways to the road. No. I don't, we don't. Uh, didn't our other partner say he saw some Google Earth, some old Google Earth footage of the old building though? No, that was the current building that's there. Okay. Um, they just that there's another Without trailer the in the back. Yeah. Okay. Um, I bet we could pull back on we, Google Earth and see. Yeah, we may be able to. Yeah. Um, but I, I I doubt that it was in any other position no, than no, what it no, is. No, all, every single currently. one of those is in the same position. Yeah. I mean, um, and there's different landlords own the property. Those are all. Yeah. I think yeah. not all, but a lot of them are just rental it, properties. Yeah, it, it's interesting that in any of that, did they uh, say that except for that one neighbor uh, that they interviewed. And at no point do they say we asked her if they if she heard the the, the, the disturbance. Speaker. Right. You know, and it was there loudspeakers or anything mm -hmm. like that. I think that if you were a proper investigator, mm -hmm. that would definitely be one of the questions that you would ask. Right. One would think. Yeah. Um, and that Sled didn't share the interview notes with me. Um, even I asked for them. They, they mm -hmm. I guess they figured that's something they don't have to share. Um, yeah, I would. I would say. Did you hear what happened? Do you hear anything that was going on next door? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard. I heard some gunshots. Uh, is that all you? Did you hear anything before that? If so, what did you hear? You know, do you, the gunshot that you heard that you said was louder? Can you be a little bit more descriptive? It depends mm -hmm. on what your definition of a thorough investigation is. Exactly. I mean, you know, we, but if it, you're that's a, subjective. If you're a cop, <laughs> if you're a cop investigating another, another cop, cop, how thorough are you going to be? Yeah. We know the answer to that, that it yeah. never works out, really. Mm -hmm. um, we investigated ourselves, and, you know, we didn't do anything wrong, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Rock was brought over by Lee, Lee Bone. And everybody knows from listening to this show, our campaign against Lee Bone is, is it clearly stating that Lee Bone has a problem with hiring people that he knows are violent or willing to bend rules mm -hmm. or 
um, are going to walk that thin blue line. Yep. You know, um, I've had several conversations with current deputies mm -hmm. and several more with former deputies, and they talk about the disconnect between the command staff and the, the guys who are actually out on the road. That they say Lee Bones the face on Facebook mm -hmm. and in front of the TV, but Rock Coleman's the one who actually runs the show and the operations. Which, yeah. okay, you know, the sheriff shouldn't be micromanaging, and, you mm -hmm. know, but he doesn't even talk to the guys yeah. and girls. He doesn't talk to except the when he's yelling at them, or except when he's threatening them with and a polygraph, <laughs> and, or yeah. he's saying he's going to subpoena their cell phones. And, yeah, we're going to um, put them on the box. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that over and over. I've heard that multiple deputies yeah. about, uh, man, he, he, he'll throw you on the box, on the box. If he asks direct <laughs> questions and he thinks you're lying, he's going to threaten you with a polygraph. To me, <laughs> we're back, folks. Welcome back. Thank you for listening to our, don't mind that noise you heard. No. Um, welcome back. Thank you for listening to our commercial. Please go visit the Swamp Log and Bishopville. I was just there yesterday. All right. And our buddy Mark went the day before. Okay. And Mark is actually scuba certified. He's going to start mm -hmm. helping them Hell yeah. dive for logs in the yeah. swamps. Um, and I would love to go. I am. I'm not swimming in a damn swamp. I'm no, not, no. I'll be on the boat. Like no. Rick, Mark, some, you're going to get eaten by an alligator. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be there to witness, see the alligator feeding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll fucking uh, swat off the water moccasins. All right. <laughs> All right, so before we left for our um, very short break, we were talking about Lee Bone's responsibility for his deputies' actions, mm -hmm. the misdeeds of his deputies, right? And what's in the paper today, the Camden... Well, it doesn't say Camden. It's, it's the Chronicle Independent. Why do we keep saying Camden Chronicle? Well, it's, it's, Camden the, Camden it's known as it a Camden Comical. <laughs> yeah. So the Chronicle Independent. Martin Kahn wrote a story today. Martin Kahn is the editor. Deputy sheriff, or deputy, comma, sheriff, faced third lawsuit. So, Lee Bone and Jonathan Goldsmith are now have a new lawsuit going against him. Is this a separate individual suing them? Separate, then? separate uh, person. Okay. This is new. So, uh, his last name is Prescott. Uh, the current lawsuit is filed on behalf of Mr. Prescott. Lawsuit claims in the evening of February 28, 2020, Goldsmith pulled Prescott over for failing to dim his high beam lights on the car he was driving at the time. It claims that Goldsmith initiated a traffic stop in Prescott's own driveway and claims that despite Prescott not showing any signs of impairment or driving under the influence, Goldsmith asked him to undertake a field sobriety test, which Mr. Prescott refused. At that point, the lawsuit alleges Goldsmith attempted to illegally arrest Prescott for DUI and that during the course of the unlawful arrest, Prescott lawfully resisted Goldsmith, which led to Goldsmith physically attacking him. Lawfully resisted? That's what it said. Okay. So we need to look into that's that. What the, what is that's that what term? the the, uh, the the person is saying that he un, uh, unlawfully arrested me. He he tried. That's to, what the lawsuit's saying. He yeah. unlawfully arrested me. But that's is, for a jury or a court to right. decide. But this says. Uh, he lawfully resisted. So if we could look that up and see what that means, lawful resistance. I guess if some cop just comes and tries to jack you up for no reason, you can fight back and yes. defend yourself? Yeah. Well, you're going to get shot. Yeah, you can, you yeah you're going to end up getting I didn't say it was a uh, <laughs> yeah. smart thing to do. <laughs> All right, so then it says, quote, after severely beating and illegally arresting Prescott, Deputy Jonathan Goldsmith and others under his direction illegally searched Prescott's girlfriend's vehicle and illegally seized a pistol that belonged to her, which was located under the driver's seat, and of which Mr. Prescott had been unaware of. It goes on to play, uh, claim that he, after he um, was at the detention center, he did a blood alcohol test, and he was below... The uh, illegal. What was it? Point zero, point zero six. six. What is it? Point oh eight is the legal limit. Yeah. Um, all right, and then I want to I want to read over. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. So Goldsmith, in his report, it's completely is contradictory to what Mr. Prescott said. Of course, 
Um, and I got to look through my box of bullshit because I, I have all of Goldsmith's use of force incidents and um, I have to find this case. Um, so this this has uh, the main important part thing I want to read out of this article. Um, Prescott's lawsuit, as two others have, also claims that Sheriff Bone ultimately bears responsibility for Goldsmith's alleged illegal acts because of allegations stemming from both Bone and Goldsmith's time with the Camden Police Department. As those lawsuits alleged, the new one claims that Goldsmith had been ordered to undergo de-escalation training while at CPD, while a CPD officer, by a board convened by Bone, who, had, who was a commanding officer at the time. Goldsmith quit before having to undergo the training. Only to be hired, the lawsuit alleges, by Bone shortly after being elected sheriff, despite being aware of Deputy Goldsmith's proclivity to use excessive force. So that is saying, allege this, allege that. The fact is, Lee Bone was a captain at Camden Police Department, and he convened a board to review Goldsmith's use of force incidents. That board ruled that Goldsmith would have to go on uh, de-escalation training, among other things, I think anger management, and there was one other. Um, but instead of going to that training, Goldsmith resigned. And went to Fairfield. Went to Fairfield County for about two breaths. Who accepted down at him Except, without yeah. question, apparently. Right. Then about three months later, I think it was, um, three or four, when Bone got like sworn that. in as the sheriff, the day one he hired Goldsmith, knowing that he did not Hired undergo. Rock Coleman and Goldsmith. Yeah, that's right. Right around the same time. Within first days. Day, his first, yeah. The first day in office, uh, Bone hired Goldsmith on. So, one can assume that he said, hey man, go to Fairfield County, keep your nose clean. When I get sheriff, I'll bring you over to sheriff's office. So, day one, he hired Goldsmith over there, knowing that he has a proclivity for violence, knowing this. And we said it a whole bunch before, I don't know how many times we're going to say it again, that Goldsmith, if you were to meet him, bump into him at the, gro at the grocery store, whatever, he's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Um, just a big old teddy bear of a guy. He's a big dude, though. He's got to be like 275, maybe more. He's a big guy. But um, nice as can be. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've had interactions with him on a few occasions. And on, on official yeah, capacity. And, and an official But yeah, clearly he should not be in a position of no, authority like that. No, no, definitely. Or at least not. have a partner to kind of rein him in a bit. Um, back <clears> to <throat> that lawful resistance. Yeah. I cannot yeah. find anything about that online. No. Um, that might be... The Chronicle Independent making. I think there are upwards. there are some there are some uh, um, Supreme Court decisions oh, in the, oh. in several cases over the years. Now, I don't have them handy. Of all course. I was able to find was unlawful arrest. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't find anything about lawfully resisting. Yeah, I um, would imagine if it's an unlawful arrest, is that assault? Is that um, so, illegal imprisonment? So here in, yes, but here in South Carolina, basically, um, you can have up to three offenses of resisting arrest, mm -hmm. but it's pretty cut and dry, the wording in South Carolina. If you resist arrest, you are guilty of a misdemeanor, yeah. and they can be convicted later on. Yeah, like they always say that, you know, the roadside is not where you try your case. No, no, no. So no. Just it's don't not resist. smart to resist. You can but passively you get, resist. You, you, you might get beat up like this fellow did. Right. Yeah, which... By our track record here in Kershaw County, you're probably going to. You're going to take a serious ass whooping. But so here's what this says. What is new in Prescott's lawsuit is an allegation that while he was with CPD, Bone made a music video on his personal iPad known as Goldsmith's Greatest Hits. That's what the title is, right? This video is set to the song Here Comes the Boom by the rap artist Nelly from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And begins with depictions of extremely violent football tackles and ends with video of Jonathan Goldsmith physically attacking a citizen in an extremely violent and completely unnecessary manner when he was working as a Camden police officer. The lawsuit claims this is an example of Bone not only knowing of, but condoning and endorsing Goldsmith's behavior. Assistant Kershaw County Attorney Tommy Morgan sent the following statement in response to this particular allegation. This video, dot, 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 
has been provided to attorney Brett Perry as part of ongoing litigation. So the video's real. It exists. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it before We've on the show. We've heard uh, rumors of We've it. been talking about this. Video's out there. The video, however, does not and has not resided or been retained on Kershaw County Sheriff's Office or Kershaw County Computer Systems. Remember the code of ethics I read earlier? Yep. Personal and professional life. Yep. You have to say, all right, is that something that we want our sheriff to be doing? I mean, why did he make videos? this video? Why? That's what I... Uh, why would he do that? Unless you know, he thought it was so hilarious to watch Goldsmith brutalize citizens. No, I mean... Well, I you a, know, I edit videos. Yeah. And it takes a little while oh, to do that yeah, kind no, of it's thing. Not, it's was not he just practicing it. and thought this, you know, <laughs> yeah. for shits and Maybe giggles? Maybe he's working on moving over um, to TikTok. Does he, get a five does he show <laughs> this at his barbecue dinners? Uh, yeah. Who else did he, who show, did he show this to? Right. Certainly, was he going to let this loose into the public well, on look. Facebook like he does every damn thing else? It's claimed that he made this in Camden. So he's been with the sheriff's office for almost four years now, and mm -hmm. he still had this on his iPad. The reason that it was found out to be on his iPad, because his iPad was surrendered to the court in discovery mm -hmm. for another lawsuit. He had this on his iPad, and he didn't even care to delete it before he turned it over to the attorneys that are suing him. So that's either a sign of... Gross incompetence. Gross incompetence <laughs> or extreme arrogance. Yeah. Where you felt like you're not doing anything wrong. Yeah. But how could you not think you're doing something? How could... Well, this man doesn't understand the Constitution. So. No, definitely well, you not. you know, in that one, he has no problem with Goldsmith breaking a guy's oh, jaw not. and knocking his no. teeth out. Nope. Because he Where said... he had a problem <laughs> after that was when he was cuffed and stuffed in the back of the car mm -hmm. and Goldsmith mm -hmm. tases him. Yeah. And the only reason he had a problem with that is because he got a phone call saying, oh, crap, you're in trouble. Yeah. He got a phone call from the news, like, hey, what do you do? You have any comments on what happened at this incident? And he's like, um, what? What? He never looked at the video. He doesn't even have an account for the system that stores the videos. He doesn't have it. He is not anywhere on the logs as saying that he is logged in. See, that way he can, he can claim incompetence yeah, versus crime. Well, uh, That's exactly what it is. It, and I, he can throw I didn't Coleman know. I didn't know. Please forgive me. See, Rock Coleman is going to realize real soon why he is where he is. Rock, you are there to catch them bullets for mm -hmm. me. Yep. Mm -hmm. You are there yep. to get thrown under the bus when the time comes. Yep. Just wait. It's coming. Call oh, your dear <laughs> friends. I know how dear y'all yeah, are. You think you're, said you're dear friends. Guess what, man? you got a couple knives in your back. Yep. Because you're going to hear it real soon in Lee Bone's own words. <laughs> but he'll probably bring you over to his next agency when he gets mm. booted out of Kershaw County. We'll I see. wonder if we could if stick Lee on the box. We could stick Lee and Rock <clears> on the box. Okay. You know, you know they threaten everybody else with the box. How about they... You know what, Lee... How about that? Yeah. We put you on the box. Would you be willing to? I know you're telling the truth because you wear a badge. Mm -hmm. mm, that's a good idea. What are you referring to when you're talking about the box? You know, the lie detector. Oh, Which, is, of course, <laughs> polygraph is not acceptable in a court, no, but he do. uses it as a weapon. Sure. Well, let's turn it around. Hey, tell the truth and let's see... Let's ask some simple questions and get simple answers. Mm -hmm. So this says um, here that it wasn't on any Kershaw County Sheriff's Office computers. It wasn't on Kershaw County computer system. It was on Lee Bone's personal iPad. That's why he's being personally sued for this stuff. He's responsible. Prescott's lawsuit seeks damages, punitive damages. Other. Bone fired Goldsmith in November 2020. So this incident here happened in February 2020. Mm -hmm. All right. How many times, how many people does Goldsmith have to beat, brutally beat, before you fire him? Well, we know it's until the news yep. media finds until out. Until somebody it's, finds that's out. That's an indefinite number. Uh, so it says at the end here, Sheriff Bone looks forward to his and Ker the Kershaw County Sheriff's Office having their day in court. How can you sit on the stand and defend what making this video? Well, let me ask you this. How in the world is it going to go to court when it, it, it's going to be settled? Yeah. It's going to be settled out of court mm -hmm. and will be tried to sweat under the rug. Absolutely. I don't care about that. I don't even care about that. I want it out of the horse's mouth. Yeah. And we have it. 
we have it out of the horse's mouth because we have a recording of Lee Bone saying all sorts of stuff that the people of Kershaw County should find absolutely reprehensible. Yeah. Um, you know, he people, should. and to defend him at this point with with the words out of his own mouth to defend him is, is asinine. You're condoning it. Yeah, no. you're, you're okay if, with if it. You, if you defend this now, um, you've got that law enforcement. I support law enforcement no matter what, yeah. good, bad, or mm-hmm. indifferent. Right. And you don't want to, uh, you want the status quo, yeah. and you're not going to do anything, you're not going to speak out. Uh, and, and things are yeah. just going to get. You might as well be worse. out there beating people. You, and you, you are, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And we've, put, we've we've stated that with my positions on voting. Mm-hmm. If you put somebody in a position where they can do this kind of thing, you're yeah. you're complicit. I mean, it's you know, this is not R or D no, or no. and it's not personally against Frankie. Mm. It's not. It, it has to do with the protection of the people yeah. and what is right and wrong. Because you got to think too. Tell the truth, buddy. Frankie's not always going to be there. It might be somebody else. Maybe somebody you don't disagree with. Right. And if you're going to sit there and, and continue to condone and to support, well, they'll these condone monsters. right up until somebody shows up on their front porch for some That's unconstitutional what I'm bullshit. They're going to be like, That's "Whoa, what, what? You're going to violate my constitutional rights?" And we know how Lee Bone feels about constitutional rights. Mm-hmm. He's sick and tired of them. Yeah. As he said in his own, yeah. "I'm so sick and tired of these constitutional rights." You know? That's a sheriff. That is somebody who has taken an oath. In his oath to sw- to defend the Constitution of the state of South Carolina. I'm so tired of these constitutional rights. That's what he says. These people, your <clears throat> constitutional rights. And Lee Bone, if we're lying, if you actually, if that was not you that said that, please tell us. Come oh, the tonight. field trip. Now you're talking about our little field there trip. You, because we went today, <laughs> this morning at 9 a.m. Well, 9.10 for me. Tonight. Well, let me give a little background. <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk about that. Um, Sheriff Lee Bone posted this little uh, picture of him and Doug Bolin at a uh, ladies' basketball game. Who's Doug Bolin? Doug Bolin is the uh, head security of the Kershaw County School District. Okay. As, and, as well as a double dipper as a deputy. Okay. So he gets paid by both. Mm-hmm. But uh, so... Uh, I think Doug Bowles. Everybody was coming in there, you know. Congratulations, <clears throat> congratulations. Yeah, and I mean, all. and then I went in. Job. Yeah, and then I went in and asked him. Well, you know, that's all well and good, but uh, have you told them what your feelings about the Second Amendment are? Can you confirm or deny that these are you in the video mm-hmm. and multiple videos? And I posted the video. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Lebo never responds ever to a citizen's question or anything like that. No. Not on in public. Well, he comes back and he says, "Jeff Maddox, have you been eating uh, wood paint chips? Paint chips? Yeah. Have you been eating paint chips <clears throat> again?" Yeah. And what the he hell? Said it on he said it on Facebook. Yeah. I have the screenshot. I think we all took screenshots when we saw oh, it. Yeah, we know how he, he'll picture. he'll post something and then delete it. Like yeah. when he put out my. Uh, place of employment uh, but if you Lee Bone or people if you go into the sheriff's office and you look at their philosophy their mission statement and philosophy number five on the list we ultimately work to serve the citizens of our community we should never lower ourselves to the point of taking our frustrations out on a citizen an officer can never let their personal feelings get involved with doing their duty so Lee Bone you have failed to live up to well, your own I, I took it as a threat I'm just going to tell y'all honestly right now, (laughs) why would you say paint chips? Mm -hmm. What paint is deadly? Mm -hmm. Okay? Lead Mm paint. Lead paint. Okay? Connect the dots, boys. Yeah, not for sure. (laughs) Jeff Bone, you going to be eating some lead soon? He he threatened me. No doubt threatened a a citizen for asking questions. At the very least, he insulted a citizen that he serves. At the very least. Yeah, at the very least. At the worst, he threatened you. And then no response afterwards. Mm-hmm. After I brought him right back and mm-hmm. told him what I had had for dinner, which was not that. I had a nice thick pork chop, some collard greens, cornbread, yeah. I, and I went back. That's not the point. The point right. is, is this you in these recordings? Because mm-hmm. we've had people 
come on there and say that we we they're fake that we uh, hold her out of context cobbled, all kinds we of cobbled stuff. the word, different I mean, words together to let make me it ask, sound like Lee Bone said have that. we released the whole thing let me Not no yet. I mean, that, well, well, do, well let me ask you something um, every time you've ever watched 60 Minutes or you've watched CNN or you've watched yeah. Fox News are you seeing or, you, or Project or Project Veritas <laughs> yeah. how many times have newspaper. you heard the whole thing yeah. all the recordings yeah. because you don't ever have the, and you don't have the attention span no. they, they know that people aren't going to sit there and listen to five seconds 30 seconds of road noise they no. they're just going to turn it off that's a 45 minute video of mostly just nonsense i yeah, mean it's just two chit-chat. dudes talking yeah mm-hmm. but man I mean, there's there's some things there's in there where it's going on a tangent and you're yeah. like well, hold on a second pause rewind that what did i just hear did i just hear lee bone admitted that a deputy named Billy left his infant child locked in a patrol car while this deputy went into Walmart. And then he says, we need to be putting out what we do good on Facebook. That way people will be more apt to forgive us for things like the Billy situation. Mm -hmm. If you or I left our infant child locked in our car when we went into Walmart, what would happen? CPF. Yep, Child Protective Services is taking your kid away you're going to be charged with child abuse, and your whole life will be ruined. Uh, you shit. know, it, it might have even been advantageous to him uh, in another way to to actually admit it. Say, mm-hmm. um, a deputy did wrong today, blah, 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 he le- left his kid. We should never do this, mm-hmm. and he's been reprimanded. That, Why would that have not that been would, a Facebook post? Right. To, to actually uh, go to the bank of public trust. That That's was, oh, wow, the sheriff actually is doing what's right. Correct. And he, and he is for justice. The sheriff yeah. is not for justice. He wants to punish people who he thinks are bad, uh, and he wants to protect the people that are in his gang. Another right. thing is, uh, like like with the Goldsmith thing, yeah. he never uh, watched the uh, whole video. That's, yeah, that's what he said. Uh, every, uh, it would seem to me, that and and you guys tell me if I'm wrong. Mm. If I was sheriff, every time there was a report of uh, excessive force yeah. or force being used, I would not want to to review that entire video and not leave that to somebody else. Have that filter. <clears throat> the filter yeah. is everything else, well, and then all those excessive force videos. Come to me. Well, we know first. that we know that Lee Bone lied in this situation because he said at first said I didn't wa- I didn't watch the video and then he said well I watched it right up until the guy started resisting and, and I said I, oh I, I saw yeah, Goldsmith yeah, was justified in, in knocking that guy out and breaking and, his jaw and knocking his teeth out yeah he said he was justified in doing yeah, that. yeah we could probably defend him. that yeah. we're gonna pay out and then but he we turned it off after that. That. he didn't he didn't yeah he said we'll probably go pay out on that but we could have defended. It. But what he's saying is that if I didn't watch the whole video where he closed the door on the guy's leg and tased him and then pepper sprayed him and then... It was only until a sled informant, basically, a high up in sled, his buddy called him and said, has the solicitor (laughs) called you yet? Well, no. (laughs) So look, this, this, this philosophy, this was a big, this, this, like I said, this is in the lobby of the sheriff's office when you walk in. This is a, a, a ang- uh, this is nothing but incompetence and ego. Yeah, absolutely on the part of Lee Bone. Yeah, for sure. He is not. He's absolutely failed as a leader. That's one. That's definitely. But he, not only that, he is purposely covering for deputies who are doing some heinous shit, man. And so today. Well, during our conversation, well, there wasn't. A, it was one-sided conversation at that point because mm-hmm. Lee did not respond. Right. I told him. I said, "Look, I want answers." And so, what what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my camera crew together, and we're gonna come down there at nine o'clock on Friday morning to uh, talk to you, and, mm-hmm. and you can answer these questions and all. Right. And Matt, what happened? He didn't even show up to work today. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Bone wasn't at the sheriff's office. Uh, now maybe he had a, a meeting somewhere else, or you know, maybe he's downtown meeting with the sheriff's association or whatever. Maybe, maybe he's at the beach. I don't know. Maybe we need to do something. Uh, get it on the books. You know what I mean? A meeting mm. on the books. So I mean, yeah. And I had we left a note. With the mm-hmm. lady at the front desk, sweet as she can be. Yeah. I've known her for years and years, and 
there is a uh, Facebook Live that we did, mm -hmm. um, and we'll be posting that and all around so everybody can see. But she was very helpful and all, and I asked, we left our names, well, I left my phone number, mm -hmm. um, told him to call me so that we could sit down and have a discussion about this yeah. on camera, okay. on recorded. So, you know, For if you want to, we'll even put you on the box Yeah. in front of the video mm -hmm. and you can tell the truth. You can put me on the box. You're sworn to tell the truth, I um, believe. Right. I don't know why you're taught to lie in police academy. And all, you're encouraged to. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we will keep the pressure on to get answers from Lee Bone. We're not, we're not gonna stop. We deserve it. We deserve it. You deserve These it. These are Citizens. employees. Yes. The families of maimed and murdered people deserve it as well. Yeah. Can you imagine if your son calls you from jail and says, some deputy pulled me over because I didn't have my high beams on. And then he, he punched me in the face twice, kneed me in the stomach and groin, and then punched me two more times when I fell on the ground. Then he threw me in the car and drove me to the hospital instead of letting me take the ambulance. Mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> or, or look at what uh, he did during all the COVID lockdowns and yeah. all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff. It, it, he's proven over and over again that he will follow any order. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with with... What we see going on in the world today, what happened to the Canadian truckers up there mm -hmm. and everything, what if that was here? Would you feel safe knowing that Lee Bone is the sheriff, given the history? It is here. It is happening here every day yeah. across the nation, honestly. I mean, yeah, people getting their skulls cracked for yeah. just a peaceful protest. Yep. And then the cops show up and say, you can't be here, you need to leave. What if, what if, say, no, what if, leaving, then the what if the out. bank, what if the bank froze your account for donating mm -hmm, to right. the Freedom Truck yep. uh, People's Convoy right now? Mm -hmm. um, if we had a, a righteous sheriff, he would go down and say, look, you froze this boy's account right there. Who's in charge in this branch mm -hmm. here? Uh, I'm a, you're you're being arrested for yep. theft. Yep. Or when Biden makes a speech and he says that we need to ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines. So if he signs an executive order, that's not a law, by the way. Mm -mm. Um, and even if say, it was, it's irrelevant because the county it's an illegal law. Yeah. Uh, and the county sheriff can say, you know, you're not. No, 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 no. The sheriff cannot. He doesn't have the opportunity to say. He has the sacred yes. duty sacred to duty. say, yeah. no, this no, is unconstitutional. We're not going to let any Get ATF out. agents come in here. Well, in Lee Bones' gonna... mind, I, I, I believe he would line up the deputies in front of your property line and say he's got the right to keep all the firearms he wants in, in his house. Uh, the property. Wait till he steps out and then shoot him in the back of the head. Right. Ruby, <laughs> have y'all ever uh, looked into Ruby Ridge? Yeah. Yeah. Check that out. Yeah, if you haven't heard of it. Ruby Ridge situation. Oh, you know, I, I think Lee admires the Canadians. I think so, too. The Canadian police oh, for sure. and everything. Yeah. Oh, look at what they got to oh, do. some great police work. Yeah, on. that's good. Yeah. When you're looking <laughs> through this this uh, policy manual that I have, it, there's all sorts of um, policies on, you know, discrimination inside the police inside the sheriff's office you, get, you here's the use of force I think let's see I can only see half the titles on these files um, use of county owned vehicles all right so nowhere in here that I have I seen anything yet on how to de-escalate situations um, how except during the um, <clears throat> The philosophy part. Then we got drones, uh, evidence handling, vehicle evidence, use of something. Let's see. What this is use of. But um, policies and all that kind of stuff, and procedures, and all this kind of horse. There's the you use know, of a polygraph. The, the, the stuff that they're supposed to know. Most of them don't. They saw. They read through that thing one time and yeah. they never read through so, it again. No. It's kind of like the oath that people take. You know, they ramble it off and and it disappears after yeah. about an hour. And uh, and, a, and then they get broken into the 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 actual 
way it really is. Mm -hmm. And then after a while they get used to that and it becomes uh, second nature. Yeah, like when I was in the Army, you get through basic training or advanced training, you get to your unit, they'd say, all right, all that shit you learned in basic training and that, forget that, we're going to teach you how it's really done now. Yep. And that exact same thing happens in the police in law enforcement. When you go through the academy, you get on the road and they say, all that shit you learned, forget about that. I'm going to teach mm -hmm. you how to really be a cop. Yep. You know, yeah. I'm going to teach you how to survive you know, out here on these streets. My yeah. way of thinking is, it's kind of like Miranda, when they uh, uh, Mirandize you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, explain your rights and all. Well, um, they don't even understand what that means. Um, what's, where's this continuing education on what is and what is not criminal, um, not the scribbles on the piece of paper? Um, because if, if uh, and I think Lee Bonin thinks of it this way, if, they, if the politicians scribble something down and it gets signed into what they call law, mm -hmm. uh, anything and everything can be criminalized and he would enforce it. When uh, in their little oath and all, it says something about constitutional. So who determines what is constitutional and not? Mm -hmm. Is it the seven robes or is it uh, Lee Bone or is it the individual? Um, it, where is this continuing education to where uh, we become um, more knowledgeable in what those rights really are and what is and is not a crime so that we can stop this political nightmare and the enforcement of that nightmare. Yeah. Well, folks, we're at an hour. It was a lot to think about. I know this was a heavy episode, yeah. not a lot of humor in this one, but... Uh, well, I got humor. All right. the, the girl at the front desk said, I don't know where he is. <laughs> right. Yeah, and we don't want. He I mean, might stop by later on. Later, yeah. <laughs> no, but she, just to be fair, she's not his assistant or secretary. No. That's not her job. Is to no. know where he is. But she um, did say, you know, I hope he does answer your questions. I'm sure there's a lot of folks inside the sheriff's office that would want Lee Bone to answer some questions. Um, I've heard Sharing it personally myself. Sharing of false yep. news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first.